My name's Helena Gardner. I'm the co-director of the Fetal Cardiology Program at UT, working here at the Children's Memorial Hermann Hospital in Houston. We would like to welcome you to Heart Week, and through this webinar, we want to share with you some good news, that babies with heart problems can be detected before birth using ultrasound, and their care and deliveries planned to ensure that they get to surgery in the best possible shape. And once they reach our surgical team, they're in great hands. And the outcomes for most babies are very good. So without further ado, I just want to say a little bit about fetal cardiology. I'm the one in the blue dress in this picture. I'm a trained fetal cardiologist, and I've recently joined our team of expert fetal doctors and surgeons. I've been a doctor for more than 30 years, and I've spent the last 16 years uh, developing the specialty of fetal cardiology. And this specifically aims to detect congenital heart disease before birth. So what is congenital heart disease? Well, it's a heart problem that occurs during the development early on in pregnancy. It's the most common congenital abnormality and accounts for at least a quarter of all the malformations we see in babies after they're born. And you might be surprised to hear that about 1% of all babies who are born have some sort of heart problem. Only about half of them are seriously affected, but these are a very important uh, group and they'll need surgery uh, before they're a year of age, generally. You may be well aware of paediatric cardiology, but the concept of fetal cardiology may be new to you. And it's in part because it's a newer branch of perinatal care. The technology has helped to see the baby's heart and image it well through the pregnant mother. It can be practiced either by a cardiologist or somebody with obstetric training. It doesn't really matter but the most important thing is that the fetal cardiologist works closely with a multidisciplinary team and that they believe that prenatal detection can help the most seriously affected babies with heart problems. What is it that we actually do when we're practicing fetal cardiology? Well, you may find that your obstetrician screens generally for congenital malformations and refers on to a maternofetal medicine specialist for confirmation of this. The cardiologist tries to make a very specific diagnosis of the type of heart problem so that they can provide the most comprehensive counselling to families who are expecting a baby with a heart problem. And at this point we involve the whole team because we want to look at the management of the pregnancy, the care of the mother who's expecting the baby with the problem, the planning for delivery, we need to know where and when to deliver baby, and the, the team that's going to be involved in looking after the newborn baby uh, need to be involved with planning, even from quite an early stage. And so, Surrounding the baby and looking after the welfare of the baby, we have quite a team. It really starts with the obstetrician. You will mostly have the diagnosis made in the OB office. And it's here that we're going to direct most of our attention in terms of training. Once the diagnosis has been uh, suspected at an obstetric scan, you would be referred to a maternofetal medicine specialist and they will be able to look at the whole of the baby to see whether there really is a heart problem and if there is one is it just uh, is there just a heart problem or are other organs affected in the baby the fetal cardiology team will work closely with maternofetal medicine in order to make this work well for the for the mother Sometimes things occur in families and we are very keen to involve our genetic counsellors to provide an overview for families to help them understand whether there are any underlying reasons for this to have happened during the pregnancy. And when we have a good idea of what's going on, 
we involve all our team that will look after the baby after birth. And these include the neonatal specialists who will stabilize baby after birth and the pediatric cardiologists who will help to refine the diagnosis and present the case in the best possible way to our cardiac surgical team. We would like to discuss all this for a family even before the baby is born. And we know also that babies who have other problems with other organs will need specialist pediatric surgeons. And so we will work together to try and produce a perinatal plan so that your baby and your family are looked after in the best possible way. This is a planning that we would like to take uh, time over and run through the second and third trimesters of pregnancy, provided there is a good diagnosis made. So I'm going to just describe the baby's circulation briefly and just show you four or five heart problems that I think may uh, be of interest to you and, rec and, and involve some important points uh, that I think we've brought up already uh, in the webinar uh, comments that we've seen on the website. So here is the normal baby's heart, and Dr. Douglas is going to go through this in more detail. It has a blue and a red side, but very importantly, for the purposes of prenatal uh, discussions, we're going to look at the baby's arterial duct. Because the baby's in fluid and the lungs don't have any air in them, the duct is very important to take the blue blood through away from the lungs mostly and bring them back down into the descending aorta and back to the placenta to pick up oxygen. A baby will often depend on this duct to stay open in order to remain healthy in the first few hours and days after birth. And the following uh, heart lesions that I'm going to show you depend to some extent on this staying open in order for a baby to maintain a healthy circulation. So one of the most severe is hypoplastic left heart syndrome. And you can just see by comparison with the normal heart that this has a small left side, a tiny aorta. And in fact, most of the time there is no flow into the left pump or out of the left pump. Now, the vast majority of Cases of hyperplastic left heart syndrome are picked up by the OB office before birth. At least 70%, I think, will have a prenatal diagnosis. And this is very important because this sort of circulation requires a lot of care during the first few days after delivery. We would want babies with this sort of heart defect to deliver near to the cardiac surgical center, and I know many of you are familiar with pulse oximetry and its ability to pick up heart problems in the newborn period. But this is one of the ones that is not picked up well by pulse oximetry unless you know about it before birth. Because the baby's duct stays open very often with these severe malformations and the pulse oximetry cannot pick up this defect as well as it can for blue babies. These babies will present in a, a waxy um, white way with a poor uh, circulation to their bodies if they're missed in the newborn period. Now, similarly, coarctation of the aorta is like a little sister of hyperplastic left heart syndrome. It often has a slim left side. The red side is slimmer than the, the blue side. And usually the arch tapers down to a narrowed area. Now, this is much harder at the moment for the OB office to pick up. And this is where we're really concentrating our training to pick up these very important heart defects that aren't so easy to detect. Again, this is one where a baby may show no signs after birth when the neonatal team look at the baby and the duct is open for a few days. So pulse oximetry also may not pick this sort of heart problem up. So we really want to pick these babies up. At the moment, probably fewer than 10% of them 
have a prenatal diagnosis and the babies can become very ill after birth if it's not detected. Now coming on to the bluer babies, Tetralogy of Fallow. This is a condition where there are usually two good pumps, a big defect between them, and the lung artery may be a normal size, but it may be very small. Now, if the baby has a good sized lung artery, the, the blood gets to the lungs after baby is born, and baby may not show any signs for several weeks after a child is born. So here is the large uh, hole between the two pumps and here is the lung artery. So if it's a good size, baby can be born locally if it's picked up before birth and baby probably won't get into much trouble in the newborn period. If the lung artery is small, this is the sort of defect that would be picked up by pulse oximetry after birth. But we would hope that in prenatal diagnosis, you could pick up the presence of the large hole between the two pumps and the much smaller size of the lung artery. Again, we're working on training in the OB office to make this a reality for people, because at the moment, only one in three of these babies are detected before birth. Transposition of the great arteries is another case where the babies are blue after birth. At the moment, perhaps 20% or 30% of these are picked up at the OB scan. We see the differences here are that the two big arteries, the body artery and the lung artery, are switched around. And the body artery comes from the blue side of the heart. This means these babies can be very sick soon after birth. A prenatal diagnosis is very important to provide them with the sort of care they need in those first few hours after delivery. And we would recommend that, that babies with this heart condition are delivered very close to a cardiac centre. Because the little mixing doorway, the foramen flap, between the two collecting chambers might be very tight or closed in the newborn period and stop the flow of blood that comes back from the lungs escaping out and to the body. So transposition of the great arteries is associated with a very good outcome for children, but they can become very sick. Pulse oximetry will pick it up postnatally, but these babies have to be in a good center within the first few hours after birth. So a prenatal diagnosis is very important for them. And lastly, another blue case, blue baby with pomeatresia. In this case, the baby has a small blue side, blue pump, and the pulmonary artery, the lung artery, is closed completely. So it's a little bit like hypoplastic left heart syndrome, but on the blue side. This is usually picked up by people before birth because this chamber is much smaller than it should be. And often the collecting chamber is very dilated because the valve is leaky. Surgeons will want to operate on these cases within a day or two after delivery. And again, we need our cardiologists and neonatal teams to be able to maintain the arterial duct in order for the babies to have a stable circulation before delivery. So we would like these sorts of babies to be picked up before birth and delivered close to where the neonatal teams and the surgical teams can manage them optimally. Again, because it's a blue condition, if it's missed at screening by the OB office, it can be picked up well by pulse oximetry. So this is a useful tool for the blue baby, but not very good when the obstruction is to the body arteries. So this is a roundup just of a few cases that we will be able to pick up before birth. Prenatal detection allows us to be able to put a baby into a safe environment at the time of delivery. 
So when do we scan? When would we like to know about a problem? Well, the 20-week anomaly scan is the ideal time to pick up a problem. So at your OB office, you want to make sure that they're looking at all levels of the fetal heart. And this is what we're training. At the moment in the Houston area, we're going out to offices and we're training the technicians who do the scans to feel more confident in picking up the problem. The mother then will be referred, or the whole family, to the fetal medicine unit for confirmation of this. And then we can offer the additional tests and counselling that I mentioned earlier. We will perform more ultrasound scans when you visit the unit. You might be with us for half a day. You'll have a general scan with our MFM specialists. You'll have a cardiac scan. We may order a magnetic resonance imaging uh, scan for you. Uh, genetic counsellors will talk to the whole family and often we'll have a roundup meeting counselling the family. A little later in the pregnancy, you'll meet the surgeons before baby is even born to discuss the sort of surgery that they will be able to offer. And of course, we know that we will refine the diagnosis after birth with the help of our paediatric cardiology experts. We have superb cardiac nurse specialists and they will help you through this journey to arrange for you to meet the surgeons to visit the neonatal unit. We don't do all this at one visit because it's a lot of information to take in, but we'll arrange for you to come back as often as you like to talk to the team and we'll discuss tests with you and with the family. Everybody will get a personalised delivery plan and we will discuss all the treatment that you need we know that some people travel from quite long distances and they have other little children in the family that they need to look after. So just to round up then, the multidisciplinary team involves a lot of us. Your local OB is a very important part of this. Without their detection, you never get to meet all of us before birth. You never get the chance to have a perinatal plan and to know and understand about your baby's heart problem before birth. So we are working hard now within the Houston area and beyond to improve the training and the confidence of the community, everybody who practices obstetric ultrasound, to empower them to pick up your baby should he or she have a heart defect. I'd like to thank you all for coming along to the webinar and we hope you found it of interest.